SpaceX is working hard to get its spaceship ready. Speed is essential because many clients are eagerly awaiting the spacecraft. However, before the Starship can be pronounced ready, it has to be tested. The upper stage, or ship, has completed several tests. However, the lower stage, or Super Heavy, has never left the ground. That is about to change as SpaceX is about to test the Super Heavy. Join us as we explore how SpaceX is finally testing the Super Heavy. It is no secret that SpaceX is building the tallest and most powerful rocket ever in Boca Chica. The city's skyline has been dominated by the prototype SpaceX has been building, stacking, unstacking, and generally improving. The upper stage towers at 15 meters and has a diameter of 9 meters. A section of it would house either cargo or humans traveling through deep space. It has half a dozen Raptor engines for propulsion and landing. As a result of the 18 meters high payload volume, the Starship will have the largest usable payload volume of any launcher in operation or being built. The lower stage, or Super Heavy, is even taller at 70 meters and has a diameter of 9 meters. The body is made up from stainless steel but would not be covered by heat shields, unlike the ship. About 30 Raptor engines will power the Super Heavy. SpaceX designed them in-house, and they will use a fuel combination of supercooled methane and oxygen. The Super Heavy will have a capacity of 3,400 tons of fuel, which it will burn to produce a thrust of 72 meganewtons. When stacked, the Starship will lift more than 100 tons to lower Earth orbit. SpaceX is cutting the cost of space travel by designing both the upper and lower stages to be fully reusable. As such, they will fly multiple times before being retired, with relatively minor refurbishments needed after each launch. For SpaceX to reuse the Starship, it has to find a way to land them safely. To achieve this, the upper stage wears a coat of heat-resistant tiles on one side of its body, the side that will be exposed to heat during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. When close enough to the landing pad, the Starship will unfold its six legs and land. However, SpaceX also plans to catch the Starship with a pair of arms, which Musk calls the Mechazilla, extending from the launch tower. When there is no Mechazilla, the Starship will rely on its legs to land. Since the Super Heavy will always return to the Earth to land, it will be caught by the Mechazilla too and might not need retractable legs. However, the legs will be necessary if SpaceX chooses to land them on a drone ship out at sea, as the boosters of its predecessor, the Falcon Heavy, do. As the heaviest flying object ever, catching the Super Heavy mid-air is no mean feat, and Musk acknowledged it could fail. We might see how that plays out soon, as Musk claims SpaceX might try to put the Mechazilla to action with the Booster 5 prototype. The level of reusability Musk is aiming for here is mind-blowing. He wants a single booster to carry out three launches in a day. That is unheard of in the space launch industry. For comparison, the fastest turnaround time for the Falcon 9 is 27 days. To test the Super Heavy booster, SpaceX is sending the Starship to orbit. The flight plan has been made public for a while, and we know the sequence and pass of the upper and lower stages. On that historic flight, the heaviest and most powerful rocket ever built will take off from Starbase in Texas. Three minutes after liftoff, the Super Heavy booster will separate from the ship. The booster will land in the Gulf of Mexico, about 20 miles from the shore. This will take place 495 seconds or 8 minutes after launch. The ship will continue, passing over the Straits of Florida before entering orbit. It will return to Earth and make a soft, targeted and controlled ocean landing about 62 miles off the northwest coast of Kauai. Barring any surprises, the whole flight will last 90 minutes and history will have been made. There will be no landing barge waiting to receive the Starship, Musk explained why on Twitter. The reason is to make sure the ship doesn't break up upon re-entry so they can access the trove of data it can yield. That precious data is why SpaceX is sending the Starship to space in the first place. They want to collect data about how the ship behaves during a flight. It would have been tough to accurately predict or replicate it computationally. However, before the flight takes place, SpaceX has a lot of ground to cover. The Booster 4 prototype looks like the candidate for the orbital flight. It has already been mated with the Starship S-20 prototype, although SpaceX quickly dismantled and moved it back to the bay. Still to come are cryogenic and static fire tests before the booster is certified ready. The ship S-20 has already had its cryogenic test and everything went well. A static fire test with all six Raptor engines may not be far away. The Booster 4, however, is still waiting for its own cryogenic and static fire tests. 
This is a serious affair, as it would require SpaceX to outfit Starbase's orbital launch mount and complete most of the orbital pad's massive tank farms. The good thing is, by completing at least one of the tank farms, SpaceX is moving closer to being ready for the orbital flight. SpaceX has made progress in that aspect, as it has installed the seventh and final propellant storage tank in the first farm. The tanks are made from the same materials that make up most of the Starship's structure. The first two tanks, also known as GSE tanks – you can't run away from acronyms here – were completed in April and promptly installed at the orbital launch site. SpaceX still has work to do on the tanks before they are ready for the Super Heavy's cryogenic and static fire test. It has to complete the plumbing of the last tank and some of the other tanks, install insulative cryo shells, and then apply an insulative foam-like material called perlite on all the tanks. Two of the tanks store liquid methane, three store liquid oxygen, while the last two store liquid nitrogen. Altogether, there is enough storage for 2,400 tons of liquid methane, 4,000 tons of liquid oxygen, and 2,600 tons of liquid nitrogen. Looking at these capacities, you will see that the total capacities can only hold enough propellant for one orbital flight, and a full restock might be necessary after each orbital flight. That is something Musk must take care of if his crazy, super-heavy booster turnaround time were to happen. Filling each tank farm requires more than 100 tankers and would last more than a week. But, of course, you can be sure SpaceX is already thinking about the problem of refueling its Starship. The company is already building a liquid oxygen and nitrogen production plant close to its Starbase factory. All it has to do is run a pipeline from the plant to the orbital launch site, and restocking could take place with little to no human intervention. Tesserati reports the tank farm could be ready to support the Super Heavy Booster's proof-and-fire test in just a few weeks from now. Meanwhile, SpaceX has started work on a new pair of prototypes, the S-21 and Booster 5. The work is moving at a fast clip compared to the progress on the S-20 and Booster 4. For example, SpaceX is firing the heat-resistant tiles on the S-21 at a far earlier stage in the development is also installing the plumbing on Booster 5 simultaneously as it is stacking the booster. At this rate, SpaceX might soon have two orbit-worthy Starship prototypes in its hand. Meanwhile, the date for the first orbital flight of the Starship is as good as moved to next year due to delays as the FAA has dragged out the approval process. But that would not stop SpaceX from working on its Starship. Let us know what you think of SpaceX finally testing the Super Heavy Booster in the comments.